Hello Tayforges. Today we will implement the logic of the following UI classes. Next level window controller, from which we go to the next level, so ECS subscene. Game over window controller, from which we will return to the menu scene. Menu controller, from which we go to the game scene. And of course, ECS systems, like level system, and extend game over system and input system implementations. We will cover loading screen trigger when switching between sub scenes or scenes in our next video. So let's dive in and see how it works. First, let's fix the behavior of some buttons. Look at button 2 in the project. As you can see, these buttons have a lot of empty space, which is not good for input because we can click on this empty space. It is raycast. So solution for this is to have cropped image to the desired size. So I can replace buttons with new ones and now it is necessary to adjust the back to menu and next level buttons. For back to menu button, let's set width to 400, high to 125, Position Y to 50. For next level button, let's set width to 450, high to 125, position Y to minus 45. That's it. Let's start coding. And let's start from refactoring player animation cleanup system to player manage cleanup system. Also variable to player manage entity query. Level references, it as sub scene references, can be stored in the list of entity scene references. However, I want to access them via the game scene, not via each level scene. So I decided to use the singleton pattern. I'm not a big fan of this pattern, but in this particular case, where I want to get access to sub scene data from level system, it really makes sense. So let's create a new class which inherits from mono behavior. And add serialize field private list entity scene reference entity scene references. Of course, also create getter. Let's prepare public static level references instance with public getter and private set. Then in the awake, if instance is not null and instance not equal this instance, then destroy game object and return. Otherwise, let's assign instance to this and mark the instance as don't destroy on load, so pass this or instance as parameter. That's it. We have created our singleton class, which is like a model for data. Okay, we are in the level system class, so what's the plan? First, we're going to create two events, last level complete and level loaded. We need this uh, to communicate with other systems, for example, input system. Also, when I call load scene, I have to catch the entity current scene because I need it to unload the scene later in the game. What's more, I will increase the current level index variable when sub scene is loaded and reset when game scene is loaded. It's time to implement load next level. If current level index is greater than level references dot instance dot entity scene references dot count minus one, then invoke last level complete event and return. Otherwise, unload previous level and load next sub scene. So let's create unload previous level method. If entity.null.equals current scene, return. Otherwise, debug.log unload sub scene just to inform us in the console. Then let's write scene system.unload scene 
word.defaultGameObjectInjectionWord.unmanage and pass current scene. Now let's create load next sub scene and write debug.log load sub scene. Then current scene equals to scene system dot load scene async. Pass word dot default game object injection word dot unmanage. And as the second parameter, level references dot instance entity scene references current level index plus plus. At the end, call level loaded dot invoke. Then in the onCreate, let's subscribe to scene loaded. We need to reset state when game scene is loaded. Don't forget to remove subscriber in the onDestroy. Let's implement onScene loaded method with two parameters scene and load scene mode. Inside it, let's write if scene.buildindex not equal to int scene type game return. Otherwise, set current level index to 0, current scene to entity null, and load next level. I want to add scene type enum to avoid magical string variables in the code. So let's create a new scene type enum in which we are going to add many end game elements. This approach is resistant to the scene name changes, however, is vulnerable to changing the order in the build settings. Also, adjust namespace to tayforge.core. Ok, then let's move to implementing UI logic on the game scene. We need to load next level after level completion and return to many scene if the game is over. In the next level window controller, let's add a new serialized field, private, button, next level button. In the onEnable method, let's add a listener to on next level button click, which I will create in a moment. Also remove the listener in the onDisable method. Now create new method on next level button click. Here we can use load next level via level system. Don't forget to disable the container after the button is clicked. Ok, so we have logic for next level window. It's time to adjust game over window controller. In this class, we also need to add a serialized field for button. Then let's create a level system variable because we have to unload previous level sub scene before we move to the many scene. It is very important step due to the fact that we want to make sure that everything related to ECS is properly disposed of. Next, add listener to on game over button click in the on enable and remove listener in the on disable. Let's create the on game over button click method where we can unload previous level thanks to our implementation of the level system. Oh, let's fix private to public. And then load the main scene via the Unity Scene Manager. At the end of the method, we disable the container. Last time, we handled situation when player lose game, but what about win? Let's go to Game Over System and add a new variable, Level System. And then a new onStart running method. Assign level system to word dot default game object injection word dot get existing system manage level system and then subscribe to the last level complete event. Remember to unsubscribe in the on stop running. Next create a void win game method. Here we want to call the game over event but with a false flag 
because the player didn't die, so he won the game. Also, add the code necessary to destroy the player entity, so that the player managed cleanup system can do its job. Ok, what's next? During testing, when recording video, I found a rather nasty bug. After reloading a scene, the camera didn't reset. Why did this happen? Because I never set virtual camera to null. So what is the solution? I need to check if virtual camera dot follow is null. If so, assign transform to follow. So let's refactor player camera system. Let's change if sign to equals and paste virtual camera assignment code. Then write if virtual camera dot follow not equal null return. Also add debug dot log player visualization player entity query get singleton entity dot index because I want to check if, when changing subscenes, the player index changed, if so, everything works as expected, because we have new player instance on the new subscene. Another important thing is to re-enable input controls after a level change. We can delete input controls .enable in the onCreate method, because we are going to enable input only in game. Let's subscribe to level loaded event in the onStart running method. Create new on level loaded method and write input controls dot enable. Also unsubscribe in the on stop running. I invite you to support us on Patreon. Any support is really appreciated. On Patreon, I share materials in advance and add useful code snippets. Ok, last thing to do in the code, let's create the menu controller script. First add two serialized field buttons, one for start game and the other for quit game. Also add a header references. When menu is enabled, let's add listeners for the corresponding events. Of course, don't forget to remove listeners in the on disable. Also, create on start game button click method where we load game scene. Let's use the scene type enum here. Let's create an on quit game button click method where we call application quit. Ok, let's go back to Unity, select event system on the scene and replace with new input system. Remove debug display dot draw component, then pass necessary references to the next level window and game over window. Let's open ECS game scene and make prefab from the level object. Rename prefab to level 1. Duplicate this prefab and rename it to the level 2. Also, let's make prefab from systems object. Then create levels directory and move level prefabs to it. Ok, it's time to rename our level scene to ECS level 1. Duplicate this scene. Then rename the second scene to ECS level 2. Open scene and change level 1 prefab to level 2. Let's also change one of the ground position so we can see immediately if the scene changes. Change the background to the other one. Ok, back to game scene. Let's remove ECS game scene from hierarchy and create level references object. Add component level references and select references to ECS subscenes. Finally, let's create a new menu scene, remove directional light 
and let's create a canvas. Set canvas render mode to screen space overlay, then UI scale mode to scale with screen size. Let's set reference resolution to full HD. Match to width. In the canvas, let's create menu object, set anchor to stretch. Then create content object, also stretch. Inside it, let's add background, just leave it white. And create two buttons, start game button and quit game button. Of course, let's add menu controller script and pass references to buttons. Then position objects, select source image, adjust size and fonts. I will do it in the fast forward. Last thing to do, let's add scenes to build settings. Great, we are ready to test. Ok, let's go to the end flag. We get next level window. Click on the button. Great, second level is loaded. Time to win game. Let's go to the end flag again. Go to the next level. But we don't have more levels, so this time we got game over window. Fantastic. Let's back to menu. Everything works as expected. After restart, also game is working. However, after implementing this solution and testing in the Android build, Entity Scene Reference returns null. According to the documentation, the build process only detects offering scenes referenced by Entity Scene Reference, so bake references and subscene mono behaviors. The build process doesn't detect scenes references by GUIDs and their Entity Scene files will be missing from builds. For this reason, you should avoid using GUIDs to identify scenes and also avoid using entity scene references, which is not directly said, in the serialized field references. My idea is that we will add a new scene main, which will always be loaded and will have scene loader subscene, so that when we fill the buffer with levels in Baker, we can easily get entity scene references of the levels. First of all, let's create a new directory named Dynamics Buffers. Inside it, let's create an entity scene reference buffer element data struct, which implements iBuffer element data. Each element of the buffer needs to store reference to subscene, so let's add a new public entity scene reference field. Now let's create a new script, entity scene reference offering, we'll base it on the documentation example. Let's add if unity editor and end if. Then create serialized field, private list unity editor dot scene assets, levels. Of course, let's add getter for this variable. Next, let's prepare entity scene references baker class with bake method. Inside this method, we want to get entity so we can add buffer with entity scene reference buffer element data type. Then let's write for each var scene asset in offering levels buffer.add new entity scene reference buffer element data entity scene reference equal to new entity scene reference scene asset. We can remove level references script. We don't need it anymore. Also, let's remove it from the game scene. So now we can easily get the entity scene references to levels via system API dot get singleton buffer in the level system. Let's modify the logic to handle additional main scene. Refactor entity current scene to current entity scene. 
create a new private scene type current scene variable in which we will store the scene to unload. Then let's create a new load scene method with two parameters, scene type and load scene mode. Inside it, let's add the debug.log, load scene scene type, and check if current scene is not equal to scene type.main because we want to unload the previous scene, like menu or game, only if it is not main. So in other words, we want to have main scene always available. Of course, add it to the scene type and change order. So main is first scene, many second, and game third. Let's write scene manager dot unload scene async in current scene. Next, scene manager dot load scene async in scene type scene mode and assign scene type to the current scene variable. We also need to modify load next level and load next subscene methods. So var entity scene references dynamic buffer equals to system API dot get singleton buffer of the entity scene reference buffer element data type. Then change reference of the level references dot instance to the dynamic buffer dot length. Same changes applies to the second method load next sub scene. So let's copy paste getter. However, in this case, we want to get element of the buffer at the current level index plus plus and also refer to the entity scene reference. Ok, let's add load scene, many, with additive mode, in the onCreate method. From now on, we'll start from main scene. Ok, let's refactor some code, so we will have calls to the scene manager in the one place, level system. Create level system variable and add awake method in which we will get level system. Then in the on start game button click, let's remove code and add level system dot load scene game with additive mode. Then polish call in the game over window controller load scene many also with additive mode. So let's go back to Unity, wait for compilation process to finish, and create new scene, main. In this scene, let's create a subscene, scene loader. Inside this subscene, add the entity scene references object and attach entity scene references offering component. Remember to pass level references to the list. Also add main scene to build settings and fix order. Ok, so let's test if the scene loading process is still working correctly. As you can see, it works in the editor, but now also in the build. That's all for today. Thank you for your time and all your support. See you soon in the next video.